everyone, this is Cloud5380 with my guide on the Water Fiend Slayer assignments. In this guide we will be talking about the skills required to fight them, who assigns them as the task, best location to do the task, best strategy using their weaknesses, recommended equipment from highest to lowest, tips and tricks and of course the key drops from them. Now you can choose a certain section of this guide if you wish or you can just click the play all option, make sure you have annotations turned on. So, to start this guide off, we will talk about the skills required to fight them. So, Water Fiends, like a lot of other um, Slayer assignments, don't actually require a Slayer level to fight them. Um, you just really need a high combat level to be able to fight a lot in a trip without having to use too much food and prayer and resources, etc. Um, here's a bit of enemy information for you. Their combat level is um, 115 or 134, depending on where you fight them. They have 1,260 life points. They um, attack with magic and a magical ranged attack. Their max hit is 100. 19 for both attack styles. There are no specific Slayer items required to kill them. Now, I do recommend being at least 90 plus combat and 43 prayer before you even think about fighting them. Um, you should really be around this level when you actually get to the point where you can ask the um, Slayer Masters to give them to you as a task. Um, you can possibly do them a lot lower than this, but I at least recommend you have the 43 prayer bit to be able to um, protect from their attacks. So that's it for the skills, now we will talk about who can assign them to you as a task. So the lowest Slayer Master to assign them is Duradel or Lapalock. Uh, Duradel is replaced by him after you complete Wild Gothic Sleeps, but they both have the same function. They can be found in Charlo Village, you must have completed the Charlo Village quest to be able to reach them. You need both 100 combat and 50 Slayer to use them as a Slayer Master. I do recommend having 110 combat before asking them for frequent tasks though, to increase the speed of the assignments. Both can assign between 130 to 200 Water Fiends. The other Slayer Master is Curadale. She is the highest Slayer Master and can be found inside the Ancient Cavern. You must have completed the Barbarian Training minigame in order to reach her. To use Curadale as a Slayer Master, you need both 110 Combat and 75 Slayer. It is up to you to wait till you're 120 Combat before asking her for tasks, but uh, obviously it can be done. Uh, you just may find this a lot quicker to stay one Slayer Master below until then for speedier tasks. Curadale assigns 170 to a maximum of 250 water fiends. Anyways, that's it for the Slayer Masters, on to the locations where you can fight them. Right, so there's actually a few locations where you can fight water fiends, although I highly recommend um, one of them, which I'll tell you in a minute. I'm just going to tell you about the other two. Uh, first one has been in the Chaos Tunnels. Um, only reason I don't really recommend this one is for one, it's in the wilderness. Um, two, you have to trek through a lot of the tunnels to reach the water fiends. And the most important thing during these um, tasks is to be able to have a close access to the bank, because obviously, um, depending on your level and your armor, will depend how many you can kill per trip. So Chaos Tunnels aren't really ideal, but obviously that's an option if you do want to go for it. The other one, which um, I wouldn't really recommend, but I'll tell you about it anyway, is um, during the temple at Seneston Quest, you will know about the Gorox Fortress, which is like the um, fortress in the snow located north of the wilderness. Now they have um, the Iron Dragons, Steel Dragons there as well, and also Water Fiends. Now, the reason I don't really recommend fighting them here, one, they are stronger, which obviously means they would drop better drops, true, um, but again, it's extremely far distance from the bank so unless you're a really high combat level and really want to fight them there I wouldn't even bother using those other two locations so we'll just talk about the primary one. So the main primary location for water fiends is actually inside the ancient cavern um, obviously because this is the most easiest area sometimes you will find there'll be another couple of players there but it's not normally overly crowded if you have to you can just hop a few worlds till you find a um, quite a quiet um, world to fight them. Now, there's three possible ways to really reach the ancient cavern for the water fiends, which I'll just talk through them um, with you now. So the first one is if you choose to get there by fairy ring, so you need to be able to fix the fairy ring in the ancient cavern first, and obviously you must have access to the fairy rings by completing the fairy tale part 2 quest. And um, so you can access that place using that, and the code for this is BJQ, and obviously once you appear through the fairy ring, it's actually located right next to the water fiends. So this is kind of my most ideal one because um, you can teleport to and from Zanaris and the Ancient Cavern using the Fairy Ring which means you're quite close to a bank which comes in handy. 
So the other quite popular choice is using the ferocious ring teleport to um, appear right next to Curadel. Simply then you just have to run up north and go down some stairs and you're right in the uh, main area of the ancient cabin. Obviously you need to have a ferocious ring which means you need to be able to um, be assigned tasks by Curadel in order to use this method. But as your slayer level gets higher you will eventually be assigned tasks by her and she does quite commonly do water things so it's quite a handy thing to have. The final option, which I don't really recommend, but obviously if you can't do the first two choices and you have no um, other choice than to do this, is to um, go to the Barbarian Outpost. The uh, quickest way to get there is to use the Games Necklace to teleport straight there, and then by diving in the Whirlpool, you'll arrive right in the Ancient Cavern. And you simply just have to go down the stairs here, um, get past the Brutal Green Dragon, so you might need to bring some form of um, Dragon Fire Protection to get past these guys. And once you go around um, the cavern a bit, you'll eventually reach the Water Fiends. But like I said, I would highly recommend either you use the Fairy Ring um, effort to get there first, or the Curadel's um, Ferocious Ring Teleport. But obviously if you can't use those two, then you're stuck with the third option. So like I said, this is the easiest and most recommended area to fight the Water Fiends. Obviously you do have the Chaos Tunnels and Gorok's Fortress. If you don't really want to use this method, um, it's completely up to you. I just, um, from my personal preferences, I always did the tasks here and they always were done quite quickly. Um, but that's all about the locations. Next is strategies using their weaknesses. So, Water Fiends can be a bit of a temperamental task, but if you set yourself up right and know their um, weaknesses, then you can get this task done fairly easy. So, their main weakness, um, there's no Slayer items to kill them, like I said. Um, the weakness you're going to go by on this is they are very weak against Crush style attacks. So, this can be uh, any weapon style, like um, spears, god swords, moles, 2 h doors, etc. So the other crucial part of this strategy is to lower the damage they do on you as much as you can. So the most effective way to kill as many water fiends in one trip as possible is to use a high magic defense armor setup whilst using protect from range prior. Or you can use the high range defense armor while using protect from magic. Um, so it's up to you which one you do, however their ranged attack style is a lot more accurate and common so using the protect range prior is much better suited, however the choice is yours. Just a little extra tip for you all, water fiends do drop a ton of raw fish as their main drop, so either bring some logs and have the tinder box on your toolkit to cook the food, or you, um, if you have the summoning level 4, it can use a bunyip with a special ability which can turn raw fish into HP for you without the need of cooking it, however you still need to have the cooking level required. Um, the fish they drop are raw lobsters and raw sharks, so you either need 40 cooking for the raw lobsters or 80 cooking for the raw sharks. Anyways, that's all for the strategies, now for the recommended equipment from highest to lowest. So, like I said in the previous section, Water Fiends are extremely weak against Crush style attacks, so using a melee setup is the best possible way of killing these. Obviously you have got the um, possibility of using ranged or magic to fight them if you prefer, but as melee is the most effective, I'll be only talking about the melee setup in this guide, so you'll have to kind of um, explore to find what's the best armour or setup to use for either a magic or ranged style attack elsewhere. Um, so we'll be looking at the best Crush weapons in this melee setup and the best magic defense setup while shoes and protect from missiles if needed. So this is my recommended equipment from you from highest to lowest. Um, so for helmet you either want full slayer helmet, slayer helmet, black mask, helmet of nice top, dwarven helmet or fighter hat. For cape you either want a completionist cape, soul wars cape, fire cape, trim skill cape, ardone cloak or god cloak. For Amulet, you want Amulet of Fury, Amulet of Glory, Demon Horn Necklace or a God Stole. For Weapon, you either want a Chaotic Maul, Saradoman Sword, Zamorakian Spear, any God Sword, Verax Flail, Torax Hammers or any other Crush Style Weapon that's lower than that. Um, for Body, you either want Ganodermic Poncho, Kirill's Leather Top, Elite Void Knight Top, Black Dragon Hide Body or Void Knight Top. For legs you want Ganodermic Leggings, Kirill's Leather Skirt, Elite Void Knight Robe, Void Knight Robe or Black Dragon Eye Chaps. For gloves you either want a Barrow's Gloves, a Region Bracelet, Combat Bracelet or Void Gloves. For boots you either want Steadfast Boots, Bandos Boots, Dragon Boots, Rune Boots, Rock Climbing Boots, Infinity Boots, Jester Boots or Chaos Boots. For ring uh, you either want Ring of Wealth if you want to increase the chance of you getting good drops, um, Onyx Ring imbued, Dragonstone Ring imbued or Berserker Ring imbued. 
So for your inventory you want an emergency teleport in case you need to get away in a hurry, um, extreme or super attack strength and defense potions, um, prayer or super prayer potions, now depending on your prayer level and how much of it you're going to be using um, will depend on how many you need to bring with you. Um, you'll need some food, again um, if you're going to be using a healing familiar you probably won't need as much food. Um, a holy wrench also comes in handy to save you some prayer points and also a healing familiar will increase your kills per trip so the bunyip is ideal because obviously using the special attack can eat the uncooked fish saving you have to um, stop fighting and to cook the raw fish otherwise or if you prefer to use something else you can use a unicorn stallion if you think that will be more effective than the bunyip so yeah, that is the best setup you can have for um, melee style really, obviously you'll be focusing on using magic defense and if you start taking a lot of damage you can use protective missiles. Um, once you have done a few tasks you will know how many prayer potions to bring with you or how much food to bring, um, that will give you more inventory room to collect any loot from the water fiends. Well that's all for recommended equipment, next is tips and tricks. So my first part of the tips and tricks is quite handy when you first start in the um, War Fiend Slayer assignment but also you can use it throughout it, it's not just the beginning part, it's when the War Fiends are all being aggressive which basically means as soon as you finish killing one, another one will engage you in combat not giving you any time to collect your loot. Now this tip and trick is how to still kill these quite quickly and collect your loot at the same time. So what I always tend to do is as soon as I've killed one water fiend and I'm engaged another one in combat is check the loot that the previous one has dropped. Now if there's anything I wish to collect what I do is I wait for my um, character to just finish making a hit on the water fiend I'm currently fighting and then quickly collect one part of the loot that the previous one has dropped and then resume combat with the water fiend and then obviously you can repeat that if there's more than one bit of loot that you wish to collect. Now by doing this you get all the drops that you um, were meant to get you don't end up uh, forgetting about them so they disappear and also you don't waste too much time collecting the drops so you can still fit in as many water fiend kills per trip as possible because with water fiends this is the most um, vital point is your supplies will depend on how long you're going to be doing the um, kills for per trip so you really don't want to have to be kept running back and forth from the bank too much if you can help it so by doing this you'll get all the drops that you want to get and you'll still be killing the water fiends a fairly high number per trip. So my next tip and trick for you is saving prayer points. Now obviously if you start taking a lot of damage from these guys you will be using protect from range to um, block most of their attack from your magic defense setup. Now a good way to save the prayer points is to use a method called prayer flashing which is basically turning off the prayer just after an attack has finished and then starting it again before they send another one. So if timed well this can be very effective but also can be risky as you need to be on spot at the timing otherwise you will get hit. So basically you want to wait for like one of the arrows to finish hitting your character and then turn it off and then switch it back on again and basically once you get into the rhythm of it you can pretty much still block all their attacks against you and not waste so many prayer points so it's ideal if you don't want to bring too many potions with you to clog up your inventory. So my next tip and trick which is what I have brought up several times throughout this guide is using the bunyip familiar so um, this example I'm going to show you is just kind of a radical one you wouldn't really do this as high life points as what I've got you would wait till you're quite lower but um, as soon as you get a load of raw fish as a drop or it's on the floor um, you can summon your bunyip and then you can pick up several parts of the raw fish that you've collected as a loot as you can see this water fiend dropped a high number of raw lobsters in one go and in using the special attack you can turn that straight into life points to heal you now if you're worried about um, not having enough room to collect all of the raw fish in one go and you don't want it to disappear basically you can cycle your items so every uh, three to four kills you can drop a few items and pick up some um, raw lobsters and then 3-4 kills after that you can then drop those lobsters you just picked up and pick up the previous 3 items so you're continuously cycling all the items and not losing out on anything but um, most of the time they shouldn't drop a really exceedingly high amount of raw fish um, especially when it gets to raw fish like sharks when they start dropping them um, because raw sharks will obviously heal you 200 life points um, they're only going to really drop 4 or 5 and you won't be using them as much as the raw lobsters um, 
Um, like I said to you earlier though, you will need to make sure you have the cooking level to be able to use the special ability. So you need 40 cooking to um, use the special move on the lobsters, or you need 80 cooking to use it on the sharks. And obviously if you prefer and you have the summoning level to do it, you can use a unicorn stallion to use that as your healing method as well. But I always found the bunyip to be quite um, handy because they always do tend to drop a lot of raw fish whenever I fight them. So it kind of saves you money on unicorn stallion pouches and scrolls. My last tip and trick, which isn't really a massive one, but you know, it might come in handy for you, or I hope so anyway, is um, after you've been in the area for a while, the water fiends will stop being aggressive, which means you have a lot more control over fighting them. Now, what I tend to do is, once they stop being aggressive, while you're fighting one particular water fiend, check about the ones who are around you, because they do move around a fair bit, and obviously you want to go for the water fiend that's closest to you next. Now, you will notice after killing a few water fiends in one certain section of that area, they'll start to wander off in the upper bits um, just kind of an annoying thing they sort of do try and split themselves up a bit what you want to do is try and head back in the direction where you can see more of the um, water fiends on your mini map one little warning is try and not fight so many water fiends towards the southeast section of that area because obviously if you wander too far while fighting them you can get in range of the brutal green dragons that also are in that dungeon so you really don't want them turning their attention onto you and using any dragon fire or magic spells on you so um, just try and keep around the sort of fairy ring area and don't wander off too far obviously you can head up to the north part of that area where the water fiends do tend to get blocked up a bit but obviously the other way try and avoid that as much as possible well that's it for my tips and tricks so at last but not least is the rewards and key drops for them so you will earn 128 slayer xp per water fiend a task of 100 will therefore get you 12,800 slayer xp and even more for higher amounts assigned like 150 200 etc now what I've um, written down is the main drops to look out for obviously there are other items that you might prefer to collect or high alk etc um, I've just mainly highlighted the main ones um, these ones kind of make you the most money while doing these as a task so first off you want to collect any charms now the main thing about charms on this one is which is why water feeds is one of my favorite tasks are crimson charms are really commonly dropped by these monsters I think it's something like 70% chance you'll get crimson charms so if you really want to get summoning up you want to hope you get these as a task um, because after you've done a good few of these you'll get a ton of crimson charms um, moving on sorry uh, weapons and armor you want um, adamant chain bodies blue dragon hide fan braces mythal grapples rune med helmet water battle staffs and adamant plate bodies for runes and ammo you want blood death mist mud steam and nature runes and they drop a lot of mythal arrows as well so keep an eye out for them for herbs you want to collect grimy ranar irrit avento quam gadentine dwarf weed and lantodyme for seeds you want to collect dwarf weed seeds lantodyme watermelon and ranar seeds um, for other you want to collect mithril ores they are noted so you can soon uh, stack a lot of them up in your inventory uncut sapphires diamonds and dragon stones are also noted they do drop them um, coins uh, water orbs um, they again water orbs are pretty good money and they are noted as well so um, raw losses and sharks obviously use the bunyip method here if you wish to clue scroll hard um, court summons and starved ancient effigies and also they do um, drop things from the rare drop table 90% um, of the rare drop table is good money and with a ring of wealth the chance of receiving some from it is increased and I think at the moment the highest reward is around 20 mil of the um, rare drop table if you're lucky enough to get it and another good thing is bringing runes for high alk in the drops so um, they can make your task very profitable a lot of stuff on this list which I have given is all high alkable um, for a good amount so um, using this and obviously the items you collect noted you can make a fairly um, profitable task from these guys even having to use prayer potions and food to fight them you will they're guaranteed get your money back plus profit um, just look out for their noted stuff 
Well, that's pretty much it for my guide on these monsters. I am pretty sure I have covered almost everything and hopefully make your future tasks with these much more effective. Of course, if you have any questions about them, then feel free to ask in the comments section below. So yeah, like I said earlier, Water Fiends is one of my favourite tasks to get assigned. Main reason is Crimson Charm drops, they do drop a ton of them like I explained, so you definitely want to collect them. Um, you'll appreciate that when you want to get summoning up and you've found you've got a ton of them Crimson Charms thanks to the Water Fiends. Um, they drop a fair amount of reasonably good priced stuff, especially the stuff that can be high out and that is notable. So like I said, they're one of the few tasks where you're guaranteed to get your money back plus profit um, for the expense of the items to kill them. Um, and yeah, making sure you have the right setup to kill them, you can make it pretty easy work of the water things, so they do give you a fair amount of Slayer XP for what their um, challenge is like. Well, thanks for watching everyone, I have worked hard on this, so if you'd be so kind to like, comment, favourite, subscribe, and of course share with your friends. Thank you everyone, and happy slaying.